Everybody out there, it is very difficult to decide right from the outset where this equation is actually going. So don't even attempt to do that. What you need to do is to persevere with the algebra. Just simplify as far as you can. So if they're fractions, add them. Uh, if they're numerators, simplify them. And then see how gently that e expression on the left-hand side actually turns into something very simple. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to simply simplify as far as we can go. We've got uh, two fractions, so we want to find the common denominator. We get 1 minus sine A. And we're left with this cos A uh, times the cot A minus the 4 into 1 minus sine A. So, so far we've just added up the fractions. Thereafter, seeing that we've got a 0 on the right hand side, I can now multiply through by the common denominator of this bracket, 1 minus sine A. So if I times both sides by 1 minus sine A, then I get left on the left hand side. Oops, I just lost my screen there. With cos A times cot A minus 4 into 1 minus sine A equals 0. Right, got rid of my fractions. Now I've got this cot A and cos and sine, and what we do next is to try and write everything in terms of a common ratio, either cos or sine. And I know that cot can be written as cos A over sine A. So that's minus 4 into 1 minus sine A equals 0. After that, I've now got a new denominator. I've got the sine A. So I'm going to again get rid of that times sine A. I'm left with cos squared A minus 4 sine A and the bracket 1 minus sine A. All we've done is we've multiplied each term by sine A. So multiplying this term by sine A gives me cos squared. Multiplying that term by sine A gives me sine A over 1. And multiplying the right-hand side by sine A gives me 0. Now, the choice is I've got a cos squared and I've got a sine squared. I can either multiply this out or I can say that cos squared can also be written as 1 minus sine squared a, that's our quadratic identity, minus 4 sine a and the bracket 1 minus sine a equals 0. That can now be factorized into 1 minus sine a, 1 plus sine a, minus the 4 sine a and the bracket. And after that, We've got two terms. Here's our first term. There's our second term. And what's common in those two terms? There's a bracket that's common. So let's factorize. Let's take out the 1 minus sine A. And what are we left with? 1 plus sine A from the first term. And the second term minus 4 sine A equals 0. Now we've got factors. Two factors that multiply together give me 0, therefore sine A must equal negative 1, or that would be 1 minus 3 sine A, so negative 3 sine A is equal to negative 1, and sine A will be equal to a third. Right, so we've got two ratios, sine A equals negative 1, or sine A equals a third. When is sine negative 1? I will always suggest to back your thinking by a picture. Picture can always clarify your thinking. So my picture for sine A tells me that the sine graph um, does something like this. Oops, it doesn't do something like that. Okay. If that's 0, then my sine cycle does this, and it also continues to the negative. So that would be 0 degrees there. Sine is negative 1 at a quadrant angle 
of 270. And then it keeps going and 360 degrees later we have another value of negative 1. So the period of getting these negative 1's, which is actually the minimum value of your sine curve, will actually be that A is 270 and it's periodic over 360 degrees where K is an integer. Okay? And, or alternatively, you can say that A could also be negative 90. And then 360 degrees later, you would get your next function value. Okay? Or A is negative 90. Either this solution or that solution doesn't have to be both. But we do have a second set of solutions, sine A equals a third. With your calculator, you will now find the angle that gives you a third. So A would be approximately sine of, sine of A equals a half, gives you an angle of about 30 degrees. So my guess is that a third is roughly approximately, and I know that at home you're working with your calculator, um, I would say possibly 21 degrees. Okay, and now here's my calculator uh, on hand. If you take your calculator with a second function of a third, which is point K, your calculator will tell you that that is 19,47. Well, wasn't too bad. 19,5 degrees. Okay, so that is it's always useful to have some kind of gauge so you can approximate, so that you know you're within that, that region. So I just took sine A as a half as my gauge, got approximately that, um, and we now have that A is actually 19,5. So just to tidy that up. A is 19,5, and it will happen over a period of 360. But that is not the only angle. If I draw the sine curve again, there it is. There's your 19,5, round about there. That's giving you a third. So that's my 19,5. Somewhere over here, about there, we're going to get our next solution. 360 degrees later. So there's another little solution over here that we haven't yet captured, and that solution there will be 180 minus the 19. So that would be 180 minus 19,5 plus K360, where K is an integer value. K cannot be a fraction, it must be an integer. So that would just be angle A, Angle A is 160,5 plus K360. Right, hopefully if we haven't made any arithmetic errors, that will be the value for A, and you would have solved your general, um, your trig equation by finding your general solution.